Yeah, I look a little bit different. Uh, the hair's gone. I got a little bit of a haircut, so those of you that know me, it still is me. For those of you that don't know me, this is the new me. <laughs> Anyways, this video that I'm gonna share with you guys today, it's, it's a video that I promised with a lot of you, and I've decided that I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna try and make it short and sweet, and we're gonna try and get your Sony images to look as much like film as possible. Now, before you go out, I know you wanna go out and shoot. Before you do that, you need to do a few things in your camera. There's not a lot of things that you need to do in camera, but the most important thing I think is that you should shoot your photos in RAW. All right, so now you've got your camera set up. Now we need to talk about lenses. Uh, in terms of focal length, you can choose any focal length that you want. If you shoot 35, you shoot 50, uh, that, that doesn't actually matter. So you can choose any focal length that you want. Now, when it comes to Sony lenses, uh, people tend to buy the sharpest lens, you know, the G Master or the G lenses. So the photos come out really crisp, really sharp. So you can still shoot with those lenses and I'll explain to you later how to manipulate the photo to, uh, to kind of combat that sharpness. Or you can go ahead and buy uh, a cheaper lens, uh, which is not as sharp because the cheaper ones tend to be they're still, they're still sharp, but they're not uh, as crisp as the more expensive lenses. Uh, I have the 30 millimeter uh, Sigma, and that one is pretty darn sharp, uh, but I've, I'll show you guys later that I've actually taken some images and edited them to look really filmic. The only benefit to having a cheaper, uh, less sharp lens is that later on in Lightroom, there'll just be less work for you to do. Now this is gonna cost you a little extra money, but I'm telling you, this has made the biggest difference in terms of getting photos to look filmic, cinematic, soft, just amazing, very buttery smooth photos. And that is purchasing a diffusion filter. So there's a couple of different brands out there. There's Tiffin, there's Cinebloom by Moment. And I decided to go with the Cinebloom, Cinebloom, Cinebloom. <laughs> And I decided to go with the Cine Bloom filter, the 10%. I know they have a five, a 10, and I think a 20. I actually made a video on that. So if you want a more in-depth review on that filter, you can watch uh, the video I made on that. But the reason why that's so important is because it makes skin tones look um, more smooth. Uh, it takes sort of the digital edge off of photos. Uh, edges aren't as sharp. Uh, and then another really cool thing too is that highlights uh, and really bright areas of your photo tend to have this bloom that uh, that you see in, in film photos and even if you look at some images from uh, photos taken on uh, Leica, uh, you'll see that they also have a little bloom in them as well. Um, so that's a really nice effect to kind of get that uh, filmic vintage look. So pretty much now, as far as your camera goes, you're, you're set up. You are, you're ready to go out and shoot, uh, go have some fun, take some nice photos, and then come back and we'll show you what to do when you get into Lightroom. Honestly, this part gets a little tricky because, uh, you know, if you look at different film stocks, they have different sort of color palettes. Um, they kind of manipulate the image in different ways. So in, to tell you how or what colors uh, or what levels of saturation and vibrance and stuff that you need to do, that's kind of like your own personal preference. And, you know, that's something that you'll just have to, to figure out yourself. But I would say that when you get into Lightroom, there's definitely a few things that kind of apply to uh, almost every film stock in, in, in slightly different ways, but something that you would do to all your photos regardless of colors to get the to get the film look okay so the number one thing that you have to do is you have to add some grain grain is just amazing i love grain uh so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that slider and you're gonna put it all the way to 100 yep and you're gonna be done that's it that's all you have to do close up lightroom and you're good no <laughs> don't do that that's that's cringy uh, so it took a while to kind of figure out like my uh, my desired grain settings 
you know the the grain settings in Lightroom they're good you know it's black and white grain so it's a little sometimes I feel like it's a little hard to work with but I think I've figured out a very nice balance of grain and that is 15 30 and 85 so with the grain I, I usually go around 15 but depending on the photo I can go anywhere between 10 and 20 but no more than 20 and then size I'll, I'll do I usually stick to like 30 maybe I'll go up to 35 max and then for roughness, I always keep it between 80 and 85. But if you can remember 15, 30, 85, I think you'll be set. The next thing I would highly recommend is removal of sharpness. See, the thing with these Sony lenses is that they come out really sharp. And if you go into Lightroom, you can see that there's a sharpness slider and it's usually set to 40. Uh, so some for some of these sharper lenses, what I do like for my Sigma is I'll take the sharpness and I'll slide it all the way down to zero. I'll take it completely out. And what that does is just adds to the softness of the image. Kind of, if you zoom in on the photo, kind of makes things a little, uh, little blotchier. Um, but I think it definitely helps make the photo look more filmic. If you use like a cheaper lens like my Samyang, maybe I'll drop it down to like 20 or I might even keep it at 40. Uh, it also depends too if I'm using that uh, filter. The filter, like I said, also kind of softens the image. So you don't want to go too soft, especially if you think you're going to like blow up these photos and make them into large prints. You don't want to print it and then the whole photo just looks very blotchy and uh, it just looks like bad. Uh, so just play around with that slider, but definitely I would lower it if you're using like a G Master lens or uh, one of the Sigmas. I also really quickly just want to touch on the texture and clarity sliders. Uh, as far as the texture goes, if I'm using a diffusion filter, I usually don't touch it. And same thing with the clarity. Sometimes I'll bring both down to like minus five, uh, even if I'm using the filter. And then if you're not using the filter, let's say you, you watch this video and you want to go and edit one of your photos to look filmic today. What I would do is I would decrease the clarity and the texture by at least minus 10 in both. So one of those things that I think is very signature in a lot of film photos that you see is the shadows have a slight green tint to them. Now don't overdo it. I would probably increase the saturation uh, to maybe like four or five. Uh, and then also lifting the shadows a little bit too. You can either do that with the tone curve or you can do that with the, sli uh, the shadow slider as well. The second color characteristic I would say that you, you see a lot, especially on Instagram, is sort of the warmer tones. So you need to mess around with your white balance. I typically stay between 58 to 6400 to sort of get a little bit warmer of a photo without affecting the other colors in the photo. And then what I like to do is I like to add a little bit of an extra warmth to the midtones and the highlights with the uh, color grading wheel. Uh, so I'll just add a little bit of like yellowish orange to those, but not a lot. Uh, one last thing about color that I wanted to mention is that uh, You'll see different film photos that some of them will have a lot of saturation, some will have a desaturated look, and then some will be very contrasty, some will be not so contrasty. Me personally, I like to add some contrast, maybe like 10 or plus 15. And then in terms of saturation, I like to have a photo that's colorful. Not extremely colorful, but something that's pleasing to the eye. So there it is. Those are the basic things that you need to do in Lightroom. I'll put them up right here on the side so you can take a screenshot so you can remember. Uh, but basically it's grain, reduce the level of sharpness, add some of those signature film colors in the shadows, midtones, highlights, adjust your white balance, add some saturation, add a little bit of contrast, and you should be good to go. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of go through a few photos that I have, and I'm gonna show you how I edit them to get the film look. This was taken around Newport Beach. I was walking around doing some street photography. And basically this photo, uh, what did I use for this one? So I used the Samyang and I, yeah, I had the diffusion filter on for this one. So first things first, what I like to do for this one, I'm gonna bring up the exposure. Cause I think uh, having a little bit overexposed looks nice, looks nice. All right, we're gonna go plus 
0.89. Like I said, I like some contrast. We're going to add that in. 15. Uh, I'm going to lift the shadows, but I want to keep it semi-dark. So I'm going to uh, put the blacks at minus 9. I'm going to raise the... Uh, let's see. I want to do too much in this zone, so I'm going to do 2. All right, and we're gonna make this a little bit warmer. So I'm gonna do like 61-ish. All right, that looks pretty decent. Um, tint gonna take a little bit of that magenta out like that. I think the colors look good, but I think they could pop just a bit more. So I'm gonna raise the vibrance and the saturation. I think that looks loads better. Uh, like I said, I'm not gonna touch this because this is this is you, man. This is what you gotta figure out. Uh, but I'll show you because I, I I don't think I deleted this uh, the original one that I edited. <laughs> okay, shadows. Like I said, add a little green. That's good. One twenty two and five. So you can kind of see that here. Like I said, it's supposed to be very subtle. Like you're not supposed to notice it like that. Like this is, yeah, I mean that that's okay, but I like more subtle. So five, six, whatever. Uh, and then I'm not going to touch the midtones here, but I'm going to touch the highlights again. I'm going to do about 41 and seven. Okay. So even though I use the diffusion filter with this photo, I'm going to add a little bit more bloom to the highlights. And like, if you watch my Cinebloom video, you'll you'll learn that if you just increase or decrease the clarity that it actually increases like the bloom of the highlights. So you can see that if I just blast it, but I'm gonna only go to minus five. So look at the difference here, guys. Look where we started. Basic photo, basic Sony photo. Boom, film vibes, all right? But we're not done. We're almost done. Now we gotta add that signature grain, baby. 100, let's go. No, no, no. Dude, there's literally some, I used to, I shouldn't say that. I used to use a lot of grain and then I was like, whoa, dude, what the hell? So 15, remember 15, 30, 85. 15, 30, 85. That's, that's, that's the golden grain right there, man. Come on, 85, boom, look at that beautiful grain it's not it's very subtle you know the way i base it off of is i look at the sky and if the grain is like super super uh, uh visible or apparent in the sky i tone it down so like to give you an example like okay it's not like terrible here but if you look at the sky it's just like dude this guy just took that slider and, and slammed it so i kind of like slide the slider watch the sky and kind of Kind of judge it off of that so i like the 15 area i think that's good you can see it but when you zoom out it looks pretty decent all right last thing last thing that i did i gotta stop doing this last thing that i did <laughs> is sharpness down to zero so if i zoom in just so you can see what it actually does so here we go that's 40 that's zero and you're like dude that looks super blurry but you have to understand you're zoomed in x 400, I don't know. But if you zoom out, you really, really softened up that image. So that's it. That's the original. And that is the basic correction. Now, if you go to my edited version, you will see that I messed around with the colors. All right. So you can basically see that I didn't do much, but I kind of brightened a few colors. So I usually brighten, I lower the saturation of, of the greens, uh, as you can see here, and I change the hue a bit. But most of what I'm doing is if you look at the orange and the blues, right? Notice how it goes, becomes a little bit more orange and a little bit brighter. And you can kind of see that on the garage too. Look at that. And then if you look at the blues, 
before, after. So I just change the um, the hue a little bit. And I bring like some of the saturation down and you know, there's different shades of blue here. So you have to kind of mess around with it. But from that to that. So that's pretty good. I mean, look at this photo, right? That's the original. And with the right lens filter and color uh, grading, you got this. Beautiful. Beautiful, man. Film vibes, and I didn't have to shoot with a film camera. And I saved a ton of money. Okay, guys, so we're doing a little bit of vlog action here. That was basically the tutorial, the Lightroom tutorial. So you can see how easy it is to actually make your photos look like film. Now, before you leave, I want to show you guys one of my prints that I put on the wall. So there we have it. This is my latest and actually first print. If you see that, this is a, it's a photo I took in San Clemente. Very, very nice photo. This is probably like my best photo. One of my best photos that I've ever taken. So I put this up on, uh, on my print store. So you can, you can purchase this in only this size, which I believe was 20 by 30. Uh, it's not huge, it's a nice size. You can kind of see. All right. The frame is from Ikea. Uh, it fits perfectly, as you can see. They, act, they obviously have black and they have white. I think this goes very, very nicely with black. Um, and I think, I think it came out very nice. I also have one more. So this is the other photo that I printed. This beautiful Porsche Targa. This was in Dana Point. A uh, very, very, very nice color palette here. That's kind of what attracted me to this photo. This is also up on my print store. This is 11 by 14. You can only buy it in that size. Um, yeah, the frame I think is from Target. So I can also sell these with frames on my print store, but you're gonna get a much better deal if you just go buy the frame yourself. Um, I'm literally not trying to make like a living off of this. I just want you guys to have my work, especially if you like it. So I think it's more affordable if you go buy your own frame. Well, that's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. Hope your photos come out more filmic. And don't forget, check out the print. If you like it, support your boy. If not, at least you can do is hit subscribe. And uh, I'll see you guys next week in the next video. Thanks and have a great day.